Three of these films I watched relatively recently. One of them I actually watched weeks and weeks ago, but I still feel like it's kind of prominent in my mind and I can still really remember it, which can only be a good thing. That film that I watched ages ago is The Mummy. I was really looking forward to this. As a child, I was very timorous and terrified of everything. So the 1990s Mummy, I was terrified of, but I was hoping that this one would evoke the same kind of fear in me. I have to say, it didn't so much, but I did thoroughly enjoy it because while watching it, it kind of rekindled my love of ancient Egypt. I studied ancient Egypt at school at several different times and I fell completely in love with it. And this film has made me want to go and get a couple of books about ancient Egypt and really kind of pour myself back into that. The thing with this that most of us didn't know until it came out was that it's not just a remake. It's basically a completely different story. It's just, it just so happens to be the fact that it is about a mummy and a curse associated with a mummy. Plus the mummy is female and doesn't really look like a mummy. Not the traditional mummies anyway. So there's basically a lot going on that suggests it's absolutely nothing like the mummy that we thought it would be. It's still fantastic. Now obviously the narrative with this was exciting in the sense that we have a, a curse. Curses are always really great stories when they're historical um, because they are something that potentially could be real, depending on how, how solid your beliefs are in ancient Egyptian cultures. But for me, what makes this gorgeous is the vast imagery and the scenery, the setting, the way they did it, I just thought it was so beautiful. There wasn't a point where I didn't feel immersed in this film. I thought the whole thing from start to finish was visually absolutely gorgeous. And that for me was what really pulled me into the film. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. I'll be honest, no matter how many times I hear the Spider-Man theme tune, I will always hear Homer Simpson singing Spider-Pig. I have to say though, Spider-Man Homecoming was fantastic. And most people seem to agree with me on this one. It was very fun. I think it's a perfect family film, which is something Marvel really excels at. I'm a DC girl. I love DC more than Marvel. But I kind of feel like DC can never do family fun the way that Marvel can. They're just so great at contrasting really bright, fun colours with some darker shades and kind of um, more intense music when it's 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 more dark and action-packed and they're just really great at getting that dichotomy of, of fun and action really well. This film was funny. It wasn't hilarious, but then I kind of think it wasn't meant to be. But the times where it was comedic, it really did genuinely make me laugh. It also kind of showed the the youth element of Peter Parker. There was one moment, I won't spoil it too much, but one moment kind of towards the beginning where he was rushing out to change into his Spidey costume and he changed behind some bins. It wasn't exactly very flash, but it worked for the film and him being quite youthful rather than being a, a middle-aged grumpy person like Batman of DC. Yes, I completely fell in love with the soundtrack and would happily listen to it again and again. I will not say that this is my favourite Marvel because it isn't. That would be crazy. Nothing beats Guardians of the Galaxy and Ant-Man. But I did thoroughly enjoy it and my recommendation for this film is not worth much because if you're wanting to see it, you'll definitely be seeing it. But either way, if you're in two minds, definitely give it a go. Yeah, the next one, not so many people are agreeing with me on this one. This is The House with Amy Poehler and Will Ferrell. I like Will Ferrell. I love Amy Poehler. So I was very much looking forward to this one. The narrative itself is nothing in amazing. It's about um, these parents who have no money for their child's co college funds. They decide to set up a casino in their own house to bring in the money. And it gets quite crazy and hectic and criminal and kind of violent, but in a comedic way, if one can ever look upon violence as being comedic. It's very, very funny. It gets a little bit intense at times, a little bit silly as well. You know, some things are a bit outrageous and would never happen in the real world. Which I think is maybe a, some of the problems some people have with this. But because I love Polar and really like Will Ferrell's work as well, for me it was it was really entertaining. I absolutely loved it. Not Polar's best film because I kind of compare all of her films to Sisters, which is just at the top of its game. But I did like it. The plot was nice enough. The acting was great. And it's a really relaxed film. It's not going to win many, if any, awards but I certainly don't regret spending the time seeing it. How long have we been waiting for Despicable Me 3? I loved it! Oh gosh, I'm such a big fan of Despicable Me. And I don't know why. I just, it just, it seems to draw my attention in so much. In this one, Gru finds out that he has a brother 
and we get to go and learn all about Gru's brother when he visits them and of course the kids are there and Agnes is just as adorable as always. I think they've aged the children really well. I think that the personalities have changed just enough that you feel like they are slightly growing up over the course of the films. So when we get to Despicable 25, one of them will be having a midlife crisis. We still have the unicorns. It's so fluffy and it's just adorable and I love the way they've continued that little subplot there and it's such a fun film. It really did make me smile. The minions aren't in it as much as I'd expected but when they are in it they're just a lot of fun and a hoot. They're, they're brilliant fun. This film for me start to finish was really relaxing, really enjoyable, a very cosy warm film and I think I preferred it to the second one but I don't think anything will ever beat the first Despicable Me because that was just so unexpected. So given the fact that the first of these films I watched forever ago kind of suggests that there hasn't been that many films recently that I wanted to see. I still really need to see Hampstead. I'm a Hampstead resident. I haven't seen Hampstead because it was in the cinema for about a day and I'm probably going to end up just buying the DVD for that one. But I think we have a few films coming up that I'm really looking forward to. The top of the list is Murder on the Orient Express, uh, Cult of Chucky, uh, the new Annabelle film and It. Oh, it's an exciting time. The end of the year is going to be really amazing and it's going to be really, really difficult to pick my top five films of 2017 when we get to the end of the year. That's, that's going to be a nail-biting video. If you've seen any of these films, do let me know what you thought of them, any other new releases you've seen and what you're looking forward to seeing in the upcoming months. I'd love to know what's at the top of your list. War of the Planet of the Apes is next on my list. Thank you for watching this and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.